Hey guys, Landon McCarter here with Secure Agent Marketing. Today we're going to discuss a highly, highly asked about topic and that is managing your online reputation customer reviews. There's good things to do, there's bad things to do, there's pros, there's cons, doing things all types of different ways. I wanted to touch base on this particular topic because I get a lot of questions about it first off and also it's not something that you really should just be flying off without thinking through. So um, you know your, your online reputation is, is important because of the fact that people are making more and more purchasing decisions without ever talking to a human or at least choosing who they're going to reach out to based on sort of their online presence. Your online reviews is a portion of what people are going to look at to consider reaching out to you in the first place. So I just wanted to talk through that a little bit. Um, really. So one of the things I want to do is I want to talk through some do's and don'ts, okay? Um, one of the things that, first thing I'm going to go through the do's and then I'm going to go through the don'ts, all right? So the first thing that I would say is make sure you're responding quickly within 24 hours. Uh, typically, if you respond outside of 24 hours, you really aren't showing that you actually care and your response time really is expected to be within 24 hours if you can. Most of the Google reviews and Facebook reviews, they give you sort of notifications, so you should be able to jump on that pretty quickly. Um, that's, that's important. Um, another thing that you want to do is kind of keep your response brief. Uh, don't throw like a big old, um, you know, well, we'll talk about that in don'ts, but, but don't, don't type a paragraph full of excuses. Just kind of keep it brief and, and, and try and bring that review. Your number one goal, obviously, is to get that review taken down by helping the customer solve their problem. Um, you also want to own up to whatever the complaint is about, even if it wasn't your fault. Okay, so just take responsibility no matter what. Nobody wants to look at the back and forth of, you know, me versus you. It just doesn't look... Um, it looks combative, so you know whether the problem is true or isn't true, just the perception of the back and forth argumentative just kind of gives the customer a potential, well, what if I have a problem? Are they gonna argue with me every single time? You know, because the customer typically, you know, can be looked at as always right, even if they aren't. But from the public pers you know, perspective, you wanna just take the customer's always right approach. Um, you wanna offer to fix the problem, try and bring that conversation off of the review, trying to get them to take it down, um, have some sort of a negotiated um, method to be able to say, you know what, I would appreciate it if you take that review down. I'll be happy to do anything you need to, to fix this you know, within reason. Um, what, what can we do here to, to get on the same page? That kind of thing. Um, you also want to follow up with your promises. You know, the worst thing is, is to try and over-promise and under-deliver. So if, if what you say is, is I'm going to do X, Y, Z, and you don't actually end up doing that, then they're probably going to jump back on and give you another review. With an, I mean, you're just going to further throw gasoline on the fire, in my opinion. So some of the things that you don't want to do is, no, number one, don't ignore it. That's self-explanatory. You know, if you look through your, your reviews and you have, you know, 14 bad responses out of 35 total responses, and there's no response from the business, that's not, a, that's not an ideal situation. Um, the next thing you want to do is you don't want to write a lengthy monologue full of excuses. I already kind of touched on this, but you know, really, there's no point to go there. It, it's just an online argument at that point. Because the interpersonal communication aspect of communicating is sort of taken out of uh, the scenario whenever you're doing this whole back and forth review thing, there's just no point in, in writing lengthy you know, responses with excuses and explaining things. It just doesn't even matter. Just try and publicly, you want to just try and offer to fix the problem. Um, you also don't want to write a defensive response or blame the reviewer. Um, that's not ideal as well, just for the same theme as what I've been talking about before. Um, also threaten to sue seriously. Um, that just creates a just a dynamic that's like explosive. Like never ever put that out in public. That just creates a situation even if what they're doing is, is potentially damaging you. Um, I have seen people like, oh, I'm no stranger to you know to, to bring this thing to court if you don't blah, blah blah blah. It just it just comes across as just horrible no matter what, even if you're right, even if they're completely wrong. Everybody is gonna get a bad review from somebody. People are, the only thing that we can do these days is kind of go fire off and pop off online. And so it's just gonna happen. No matter how good your business is, you're gonna get a bad review. You're gonna get a one or two star review. So you need to kind of plan for how you're gonna respond to that and never sort of threaten anything. Um, and also don't leave fake good reviews. That's really weird and awkward. So some people will go in and like, kind of go in their own personal Gmail and leave good reviews. That's weird. Just don't do not do that. I mean, people can kind of see through that sometimes. That's a little bit of the, about the do's and don'ts of, of sort of how to handle those reviews. I have some examples that I'd like to kind of talk through. Um, let's see. Here's, a, here's an example of like a fake review and how to actually handle that, handle that fake review. So this is a two-star out of, out of five-star review. It says, they do a great job when they complete it. Price-wise, they're very expensive. 
Only great thing is they are for some reason insurance approved, so no need to wait to get an estimate and they have you know XYZ on location. So this is the response um, to handle this fake review. Hi, uh, we don't seem to have your name on records. Is there any chance you're writing on behalf of someone else? Either way, uh, can you let us know which location you visited and a little bit more about the problem with you mentioned when they complete it? If you can please call me XYZ at XYZ, right? So you wanna kind of address it Make sure that publicly you're saying, look, we don't have your customer in records. This seems, you don't want to call it a fake review, but you want to just kind of, kind of dismiss that altogether. That would be an example of how to handle that. Um, another thing I wanted to give you, um, here's an, another just example of how to respond. So this is a particular like four to five star review where it says great place to work, quote unquote. Pros, flexibility and working hours and working from home, employee focus, good benefits, nice people with good pipeline. It is it is work hard and party hard atmosphere. Cons, flat structure, no proper pathway to move to the next level, many processes to follow, one, uh, one tends to get in lost uh, in the process requirements that become convoluted every year. So here's the response from the, the particular employer. Thank you for taking the time to leave us your feedback. We're delighted to hear that, your value, that you value the efforts we have put towards creating an environment where everyone at this place can thrive. As you mentioned, our employee focused approach is what drives us to offer great benefits and support a driven but fun space. Regarding the concerns you raise about upper mobility at XYZ, please know that we consider career development a path that can have many diverse options, upper mobility being one of these options. We also strive to provide opportunities that allow our teams to embrace different forms of growth that can broaden your skills and knowledge of many areas at, at our company. If you're interested in ways to learn more about other areas, we encourage you to check out the opportunities at, at this place here, and, and they have the link for the careers page. So that's an example of kind of how to address that. Um, you may already have kind of known that, but um, to me, the main thing with, with all of these uh, examples that I've given is really the, the key is, is to just, just publicly just take ownership and try and bring it offline to get them to take down the review. That's the key. So whatever it takes to get the review off of the situation uh, of your page, your Google My Business, your Facebook, whatever it is, um, they pretty much alone have the power to take that down. You have the power to respond. You want to assume that the person reading this review and potential um, that could potentially reach out to you in a lead form or a potential purchase is going to kind of look through, through the reviews. It is important. Um, so you want to kind of, you know, just do whatever you can to acknowledge it. Don't be combative and then try and bring that offline to, to solve the problem. Now, another thing that actually matters with reviews, especially with Google, is Google does take your reviews into consideration when it comes to search engine optimization. So your website has a particular domain authority and reviews, amount of reviews along with the star rating with Google does affect your domain authority. So, you know, this is all connected, um, but you wanna make sure that with Google, you're, there's, there's more than just the customer aspect to pay attention to when it comes to re reviews. You're also making sure that you're trying to solicit reviews um, as well to get more reviews for Google to look through and more opportunities to have good stories through your uh, page and also you know higher star rating people are just kind of accustomed to like it, you know if, if you're working or choosing between four or five companies and one has a three star and one have a, has a five star subconsciously you're going to gravitate towards the five star whether you acknowledge that's the reason or not especially with AdWords so AdWords has these call extensions that you can actually put reviews on so that you can actually, if you have a five star, you can put that call extension on, on Google AdWords and use it as sort of a, you know, look at me, we got a five star review with 1400 reviews or whatever. So um, that, is, that is important to pay attention to. So I hope this content was beneficial for you guys. It's something that sometimes you don't really think about, um, but I would love to kind of, you know, hear any feedbacks or concerns, or even if you have any examples of, you know, good reviewed responses that you have, share them in the comments for us. We're all here to learn together. I would love to, uh, to, to see that. So just follow, if you're interested in talking further about search engine optimization, website development, any of this stuff with Secure Agent Marketing, we are built to serve the insurance industry. Follow the website link below and we'd love to get started with you.